This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. One of the patterns I'm featuring in my upcoming seminar, which has a lot of gifts, is golf club covers. And here is one in the bulky gauge. I have them in a standard gauge too, and they're ribbing projects. Now, after I got this knitted, I discovered an error as I typed the final copies of the pattern and that I had made this part of it too long. So I shortened it after knitting. I cut it off and shortened it. And now I'm going to show you how to do that with a sample that I knitted for this purpose. The knitting is in my lap and this is the seam in the knitting right here. And if I turn it inside out, the seam will be obvious. There's the seam in the knitting. This is the bottom and this is the top. Now this is an already knitted sweater or golf clip cover or whatever you're making and you have too much ribbing and you need to shorten it. Well we are going to shorten it by a couple inches on this beginning edge. So I'm taking my scissors and now I seamed this with mattress stitch and not only that I hid the ends but I'm going to throw away a couple inches of it, so I'll take my scissors and just whack right into it. I'm cutting off a corner. There. And I have a little bit of mess, but what I'm looking for is the seam. I need to pick the seam out. So here I am with my tapestry needle and I found the seam. It happens to be this piece of thread and I can just pull the seam open and I can pick it out. There's another way to do it too. If I did it myself and I know it's mattress stitch, then I could just pull on it and you see the whole thing gathers up. Then I could give it a snip down here, pull on the seam to straighten it out and it comes open. A long way. So I'm through with that. Now if you're working with a ready-made garment then you've got a little different problem. You don't want to cut too much if you're only taking off a little because you need some yarn from the part you're taking off. And what you would do in my case, I know exactly how much to take off, either I can measure or count rows. But what I'm going to do is count rows carefully and let's take off the bottom 10 rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's what I'm taking off right there. And in fact, I think I'll go the other way, go through that stitch, the stitch beside it, and my needle is pointing at the side seam. So over at the side seam, Here's what I need to do. I need to take a little clip one row below where the needle's pointing on the edge side of things. I have to do that before I can pick out the ribbing. Now, you can't just take your scissors and carefully cut a straight line because if you do that, you'll have lots of tiny bits of yarn to pick out and I don't want to pick out lots of tiny bits. What I want to do is have a nice long piece for sewing. And looking at this, there are two ends to where I cut. One's here, one's here. And I'm going to take this one, the one that is higher. And now you see this, this raw end? You cannot just pull on that and get this thing apart because it's ribbing. Ribbing has some direction changes, some in and out, and it jams up if you just pull on it. But you can, you can see what moves when you pull it and pick the stitches out. And as a matter of fact, the stitches to pick out on the knit side are these V stitches. So after you get the two V stitches on the knit side, then you can flip it over to the purl side and it will be this V-stitch and this V-stitch. Just get them one at a time. Try not to split the yarn. 
and you can flip it each time if it's easier for you to see or you can do what I do which is kind of hold it like this and you can just pick it out toward the opening and there'll always be two loops on one side of the knitting and then two loops on the other side of the knitting whichever way you hold it and I'm just a little careful not to split the yarn seeing where that yarn goes there we go so I have only picked out this small area but I already have a fairly long piece of yarn I am going to pick this yarn out all the way over to the opposite side and after I do it a little bit I'll speed up Back in a minute when I have it all picked out. If you are working on a ready-made garment, whatever sort of seam it had, you get to pick out. So it might have been done on a serger, and then this may not work so well because you'll discover that it has a lot of raw edges. Or it might have been done with linking, which is a sort of chain stitch seam, and you'll have to pick that out. Or it might have been done with mattress stitch. Or it might have just been put under a sewing machine. And in that case, you'll have to pick out the little fine bits of thread. But once you've done that, you have two pieces that you're looking at. almost there. Oops. Here's my shortened piece. This is the bottom edge and it does not unravel. It looks funny it has all these loops all along, but it does not unravel. This is the other piece, the piece that I just picked off and check it out. If I need more yarn, I can get this top row and I can unravel more yarn to work with. So this is a good piece to hang on to just in case I need more yarn. So now what am I dealing with? I have two steps left. The first step is to put a nice needle bind off all the way around and the second step is to replace that mattress stitching. And I think I'll just turn this right sides out. Doesn't matter though, you can do it from either side. The sides are pretty much identical. And then I'm going to thread my needle with this very long piece of yarn. I need a long piece of yarn for this. This needle bind off uses quite a bit of yarn, but if you pick out an entire row of ribbing, you'll have plenty of yarn for this needle bind off. So no worries, if you had the patience to pick it out, you'll be in good shape. So we're going to start on the side where the yarn is coming from. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for the pearl dent. See this is a pearl dent right here between these first two loops and this is a pearl dent right here between these first two loops. I am going to sew top to bottom through the first loop before a dent, bottom to top up through the second loop after a dent, and I have a thing like that on my needle. And then I'm going to draw up. 
and it's a long piece of string, so you have to be patient drawing up. Now I have sewed the first two loops together, and I look at the wrong side. I am going to sew into the second loop again, and on the wrong side, look, we have a pearl dent here between this loop and this loop. So once again, with the wrong side folded out so that I'm going down into it, I go into top to bottom, first loop, out of bottom to top, second loop. So I have a thing like that, a V, on top of my needle, and then I draw my yarn through, and draw it through fairly firmly, not insanely tight, but not loosely. The whole point of this bind off is to tighten up the edge so that it isn't this big roughly bunch of loops. Now lay that down so that again you're looking at the outside of the edge you're binding off and look at this next pearl dent. The stitch that went through this loop, the same loop, this is right before the dent, this loop is right after the dent and you guessed it, this is repetitious and simple down through that same loop, up through the next loop, so that once again you have these two strands on the needle. Draw it up somewhat firmly. Now turning it up so that I'm looking at the inside again. Looking at it from the point of view of the inside, here's the loop I just sewed in. Here's the next pearl dent. Just like before, the pearl dent is after that loop. So go in the loop from top to bottom, gravity-wise, come up through the next loop, bottom to top, just like we did before, draw up the yarn, somewhat firmly, but not insanely tight, fold that down so you're looking at the outside of the tube again, or the outside of the sweater, or whatever, and we have the same issue again. The pearl dent is between the next two loops. So down in this loop that we've used before, up through the next loop, I take my time and try to get all the strands of the thread. I am trying not to split the yarn. Draw that up. I'm flipping it over again. Again, I'm identifying a knit ridge here, a knit ridge here, and this is the dent. Go down in the loop before the dent, up in the loop after the dent. Drop your thread. Flip to the top facing and keep on going. This can be done with any knit one, purl one, or what machine knitters call one by one ribbing. This is not a smiles and frowns bind off. The smiles and frowns bind off is something that we do at the top edge of the ribbing. This funny little bind off is a way to clean up and fix up the bottom edge of the ribbing. You will get a stretchy, attractive edge this way. See? Opens, closes, no problem. And it does look better than the stuff I haven't sewed up yet. Do you see how the stuff I haven't sewed up yet has all these protruding loops and the stuff that I have sewed up is tidied up? So I'm going to continue to sew this around and show you how I finish. Here I am almost all the way around just doing the last few stitches and gosh that's it right there. So now I have this decent looking bind off 
all the way around. I don't think it's as pretty as Smiles and Frowns, but it's really quite decent. I do want to mention I tried a bunch of other methods, including single crochet and back stitching and what have you. This gave me the best effect and I'm particular about my finishing. Now I need to re-sew this mattress stitch and there's a couple of things involved. One is that I need to pick out a little more so that I'll have enough of an end to hide. So I have to give up a little more. This little teeny piece of yarn that I'm picking out can be sewed into the seam. Or you can get it into the seam with a latch tool. Either way, you can get the thing put away and th so that is dealt with. Now, I need to mattress stitch from here to here. I have enough yarn left after sewing around to mattress stitch and still have about a foot left. So it's nice to know that by using this method, you can use the existing yarn in the garment and get it finished. It's also nice to know that by patiently picking it out, you don't have a thousand little pieces of yarn everywhere from whacking away at it with scissors. So for the mattress stitch, I'm just going to first connect this end bump to this end bump. It's just a way to make the thing match up. And then I'm going to go in the dent, finding a good spot right there, that's the one. Pick up a horizontal bar in this dent, go over here, get the corresponding horizontal bar on that side, and then back over here, this bar, that bar, under this bar, under that bar, and that's Diana going from bar to bar. One stitch for each row. I call this one row mattress stitch. Most of our knitting machine manuals teach two row mattress stitch, but I like one row for matching any kind of stripes, details, or fair aisle. So you could use two row, but I'm just doing one row. I use it so often I think it's become an ingrained habit. When the hole gets small, it's a little trickier to get in there and find your bars. Stick a finger in and find them. I like to take five or six mattress stitches, add a pop, and then tighten up the thread, which makes the seam disappear nicely. And then I do some more. My mattress stitch bars are a whole stitch from the edge. They are two threads from the edge if you want to look at it that way. Now I've got my hand underneath to help myself find the bars. Because I'm getting running out of room to work here. And here, and here, and here, and what do you know? I've got my mattress stitch seam in. Just tighten it up, pull the yarn to the wrong side, and hide the ends. And heck, I'll even show you how I hide the ends. Let's flip it inside out. Now. You see this ugly little piece? That's a little bit more of a stinker to hide. Here's a way to do it. You can take your tapestry needle, take the point of the needle and go in, out, in, out of this stitch along the seam allowance, making a pathway for the yarn. Then, after you've done that, then squeeze it into the eye of the needle and pull it on through. And I'm going to give that a little bit of a trim. 
just have about a quarter inch of hairy stuff here. There, pretty well vanished. Now, this other one, because I've got a nice long string, I would normally thread my needle and sew it in and out. But I want to show you the latch tool method, which I often use when I get tired of sewing ends in, just for a change. So here's a latch tool, and I pick a spot, oh, maybe an inch and a half down, and go in and out with my latch tool instead of my needle. So this way, there's no needle to thread, and in and out, pop out, put that piece of yarn in the latch tool, and run it in, and it's hidden, and then I'm going to just trim it close. Now, let's look at this completed shortened tube of ribbing. Here we have the cut off shortened ribbing and it really does look alright outside and inside. No more big loops poking out all along that edge. This one has plenty of stretch so if you had to do this someplace that pulls over a head for instance it would be okay. And this is the other end of the ribbing which was a loop through a loop bind off. I just did that because it was quick and easy. If you had to shorten the finished end of the ribbing, you would also remove the seam, but then with a little picking around, you'd be able to unravel it. You can unravel ribbing from the last part you knitted downward. You cannot unravel ribbing from the bottom up. So that's how to shorten ribbing from the bottom up.